All right, time to begin the project. Got all my parts, well not everything, some stuff is still coming in today. Uh, got all my bellows, the bearings, hoses, uh, some more bellows, uh, some paint, primer, Loctite. Today's project, we're going to remove the out drive here, which I've never done before. And uh, but watch some videos, and I've got the download of the manual, so uh, I've got a uh, Alpha One Generation Two uh, out drive, so pretty popular, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm going to have to remove uh, the trim rods and then remove these six bolts. And uh, we'll see if we can get the out drive out. So stay tuned. All right, this cap right here is just held on by a little uh, groove in here. So all you have to do is just pop it off the screwdriver. Be careful you don't break any of these uh, uh, fingers off, or you'll end up buying a new a new cap. Just pops right off. We've got some C clips in here that need to come out, and this should be a, a pin that slides all the way out, and then my trim rods will be disconnected. So we'll move forward. All right, we've got the pin out here. Just remove the clip off one side and use a uh, drift pin here to pound it all the way out. Spray a little bit of uh, uh, lube, some uh, liquid wrench or something along here, so it will come out easier. And also, once there's still going to be some weight on that pin, so you might want to support your out drive because uh, once your trim rods come loose, uh, your out drive is going to be free to move up and down. So block it up with some wood or or uh, something like that, so it doesn't drop and hit the ground when you get the rod out. All right, a couple of things we need to do. We need to put the uh, uh, drive shift lever in forward, uh, and that'll align some pins, allow us to remove the, the stern drive. I've already got it in drive. You'll see when it goes forward, it just clicks, and it can't go reverse. Other thing we need to do is we need to remove the speedometer cable, which is underneath. So trim your drive up this is connected right here push the button you don't want to break this so just be careful with it there it is it's just it's removed here we go all right all right that's all done now I'm going to remove the six bolts here, these lock nuts and washers, 5 8 drive. Let's get started. All right, here it is, got the out drive out, and this is what happens when you put it in forward. This little uh, notch thing lines up straight, so you out drive. I had to bounce it around quite a bit, had to lower the, uh, the trailer all the way doing this while the boat's on the trailer I had to basically put the trailer on the ground to get the back end uh, the stern of the boat uh, up high enough to uh, to remove it so remove the stern drive so that's where we are now I'll remove the gimbal housing so I got to remove these uh, sensors here a couple screws and there's a special tool I got to put in here to remove and I might have to heat up this housing because uh, it's in there with Loctite uh, and then remove that and it should come out we'll see one thing I forgot to mention is I thought I would have to drain the uh, the drive oil the gear oil out of it because I have a a, uh, a monitor inside so it's a, basically a reservoir that holds the oil and I knew once I separated the, the drive that 
reservoir would probably drain out, so I debated whether to drain it or not, and opted not to to just see what happens. And apparently, uh, here's where it comes out right here. There's a uh, a valve. You can see that that button. So when the drive is on, it presses that button and opens up the valve. So uh, there was nothing in the book about draining the oil, and uh, so good to know. Okay, I've got the uh, both these uh, um, bell housing bolts loose. I'm gonna pull them out, but the shift cable right here is uh, that has to come out. I have to change that bellow, so I got to get inside the boat. I'm gonna get inside the boat. And I'm gonna remove the cable from up here, pull it loose, and pull it all the way through the back so it comes out with the bell housing. We'll see how it goes. Okay, I've got the uh, shift cable disconnected and all the uh, ends taken off of it. That way I can pull it through, pull it through the boot or the bellows. And uh, I'll show you what we got here. So I got these out. It's really tough. There's my exhaust bellows that wasn't even connected. I'm just going to replace. I got a kit. It's got all new hoses. My oil line. Got it disconnected. It's draining the, uh, the monitor right now. But uh, pretty nasty in here. Here's my, my leak that I had. This bellows was really torn. Allowing water to, to go in. Uh, especially when the motor was trimmed up. And it looks like I had some water coming here at some point. And that bearing is really uh, noisy and loose, so we're going to replace that. Alright. Alright, I had to go over all over town, three different uh, auto parts stores and Harbor Freight and everywhere, and finally found an auto parts store that had a uh, puller that I could use to pull the, uh, the bearing. I'll pull that bearing right there. with this style that should work and we'll get the new one in all right here's day two just working at a slow pace uh, gonna install the uh, gimbal bearing uh, this is the piece that broke um, allows the oil the drive monitor oil to pass through when pulling the hose off removing that bell housing uh, that broke so you got to be real careful so I ordered a new one so today I'm just gonna clean all this up uh, treat some of this corrosion prime and paint it install the bellows the gimbal bearing and wait for my other parts to arrive oh another piece that broke was this little uh, uh, synthane washer it goes right here you can see it's just a little uh, there's one on each side uh, just dry and brittle over the years and they were stuck so uh, it just broke so I've got some new ones coming in but uh, let's get started all right the kit comes with all new hoses and stuff make sure you use them if you see the hose looks pretty good but when you start putting pressure on it it's all dry rotted and that would have eventually cracked and broke or took on water all right, now we're gonna put the uh, gimbal bearing in, the new gimbal bearing. It's got a little dot that's gonna go up. You can see, got this cleaned up, got it painted. Uh, best I could. And now I'm just gonna press that in there. It's gonna go in and, oh. Some people say you just put a, uh, two by four across this and, and, and pound it in but I don't like that because that bearing that center is a little bit proud you can see and so you'll be putting stress right on there I prefer to pound it around the outside so what I've done is I got me a piece of uh, two and a half inch conduit and I cut the end off with the bell and that bell fits perfect 
and so I'll just use that to pound on my bearing we'll see how it goes all right gimbal bearing pounded in relatively easy got it seated and now since the gimbal bearing here's the race and this inside can pivot and turn a little bit you want to make sure the alignment is perfectly straight otherwise you'll never get your out drive back on so I had to order this alignment tool it's pretty beefy heavy bar is about I don't know 26 27 dollars but anyway it just goes right in until it seats I've already lined it up so it just goes right in there and that ensures that the bearing here is perfectly square with the, uh, the splines on the inside so now I shouldn't have any problem sliding the out drive in all right good morning a little cool this morning I've been working on this project you know just uh, every other day for an hour here there whatever uh, and so I'm continuing to work and today what we're gonna do is uh, take these synthane washers out this one broke when we was pulling the uh, bell housing out it's just a synthane washer they're less than two bucks a piece I ordered new ones it's got adhesive on one side so these will come off and I'll put new ones on and uh, then I'll continue with the bellows, uh, the shift cable, and uh, that oil tube that broke when I was pulling the hose off. So we'll get we'll get going. All right, new synthane washers are installed. Okay, I got the uh, shift cable bellow installed and fed back through the transom got the water inlet hose attached to the bell housing and I'm going to install the uh, bellows with a gimbal and this is marked top I don't know if you can see that right here it says top so we're going to make sure that's up we're going to make sure our clamp is on there and then I've got the bellows adhesive that uh, according to the instructions needs to go on both surfaces here and here put it on until it's tacky looks like I got a 15 minute uh, work time to get the bellows on and it should slide right on I'll tighten the clamp down and then uh, I'll put the exhaust bellows on and go from there okay I've got the hoses on this is the piece I broke earlier when I was removing this hose this uh, barbed fitting right here broke off so I figured it's easier just to connect it to this fitting and then just push it through right there as opposed to trying to reach in there and tighten clamps and stuff so we'll see how that works but all the bellows are on with cement everything's tight uh, I got my new Synthane washers in there. Uh, tricky part's probably going to be getting this piece here, this hose, since it's so tight, up in here and tightened up. Probably won't be so bad, but eh, we'll see. You got to have really small hands, small fingers, and work in all these tight spaces. All right. I'm going to get some help and see how it goes. All right, here we go, uh, another day. And so if I repeat anything, then because I'm doing this in, in multiple days, just a little bit at a time, well, just bear with me. So uh, yesterday I uh, got the bell housing on. It was really tricky. Had the water inlet hose. This is the, where it picks up. There's a tube, a hose that connects here and goes up to the back. I had it connected to the bell housing and I was going to connect it to the fitting that's up in the back of the transom. Couldn't do it, so I had to take it off the bell housing, connect it to the fitting on the transom first, and then basically have it sticking out and then 
reach under here, have this pulled up and and attach it that way. So today, what I'm going to do is you see the bellows are installed for the gimbal and the exhaust. I'm going to attach those to the bell housing. All right, got the bellows in and the ring uh, to put glue, bellows cement in there. Uh, and then this ring goes in there and I used kind of shaped a little four by four to just fit in there. And I could just actually just hit it with my hand and go right onto the, uh, um, the bellows. And that'll hold that bellows from popping out. And then when the out drive goes in, it'll push up against this so that it doesn't, doesn't come out. And uh, so the ring doesn't pop out. So next, I guess, is to do the exhaust bellows, which is underneath here. And that's going to be fun because there's no room. Let's get started. All right, so we got the bellows in, the exhaust bellows. That was pretty tricky. Had to get help. Uh, got my new gasket, new O-ring for the water pickup. And it looks like I'm ready to slide the out drive in. And the rain's coming, so I don't know. I'll see if she'll go on and go from there. All right, I got the out drive back in. Um, the biggest heartache was the exhaust bellows. It was really tricky. But uh, so the only thing left now is to, I'm gonna clean up some of this bubbling and corrosion that's under the paint. Uh, just touch it up a little bit, prevent further corrosion, and uh, got a new decal that's going to go on here, and we'll see. Yeah, get these little spots cleaned up. Just, just a little uh, corrosion here and there. Probably won't mess with this since it's the paint's peeled off, but it's not really corroding. I'll probably just leave that. Um, anyway, here we are. Okay, so I got the out drive on. When I had this off, I painted it. I didn't paint the out drive. Uh, I just had some spots with minor corrosion. So I just decided I'm just gonna sand it down and uh, prime it. And then just a couple, few spots. And then just uh, uh, treat it. And that should last till the next time I take it off. All right, we got the uh, touch-up done, probably as much as I'm going to do. Uh, did this out here with a brush. Had to scrape and, and grind all this corrosion down. Uh, there's a couple spots. And, uh, eh, don't look too bad. But I wasn't doing it for aesthetics. I was doing it in, in here. You can kind of see the, the line there where I masked it. Uh, just wanted to get the corrosion covered got a run right here so I mean it's not the prettiest but uh, it uh, it's gonna treat the corrosion and uh, I'm not so much worried about the aesthetics as I am the corrosion and it rotting so anyway here we are okay I'm gonna call this job complete I've got the uh, out drive all finished up got the decals on it Corrosion spots addressed. I need a new prop, but, so I ain't doing anything with that right now. But I think it came out pretty good. I just fired it up. Uh, there's no oil leaks. Uh, everything looks good. Next test is to put it in the lake and make sure the bellows are all sealed up good to make sure there's nothing coming into the bilge area, no water coming in the bilge area. And then I think it's it's good. But just a little bit of touch-up paint. And some new decals really makes it look like a good out drive. I mean, it is a good out drive, but makes it look new again. Nice, fresh. So, anyway, that's it.